Okay, um, I'm Keith Brown from Hydrosun Solutions, so um, the, it's slightly different. Here's a picture of me on my holidays. Um, I'm the one um, who's just had his head chopped off at the top. Um, this is our system, which you can't see where I'm pointing, um, but we're, we're dipping in the water there. Um, we're calling it an intelligent wideband sonar. Um, I thought daft wideband sonar would probably um, be okay, but I was overruled. I think it was probably right there. Um, the system we've got is for looking at underwater assets. So we're, we're interested in dealing with offshore renewable um, things. I'll come, come back to that. Dolphins um, have evolved their sonars over millions of years, and they have by far the most capable sonars for underwater use there is. In the air, bats have evolved a very similar kind of sonar. The sonars that traditional um, maritime systems use look at the external reflection from what things are. The sonars that dolphins use have evolved to let them see what's inside it. That's important because if they find something in amongst the sediment that they want to eat, it's important that it's not just fish-shaped. It's important that it's a fish. Because if they start trying to eat fish-shaped rocks, they very rapidly get sore teeth. So um, it was the capability of the dolphins that led us to one, uh, working with this kind of sonar. And so we're doing things a different way to other sonars. We're also doing things a different way to the other people in this presentation. We're not actually energy storage or um, usability. I'm sure we're another one that just got fitted in in the um, <laughs> right place. So um, that, that's, that's me just about to fall in um, to the water. Let me find the right buttons. There we go. Oh, solutions. Um, one, of the, one of the exciting things about now is we've got to do something about our energy. Okay, we've, we've no choice. Um, we are having to look at different approaches. Um, offshore renewable electricity generation, um, the one which there's most maturity in the field at the moment is offshore wind, but offshore wave and tidal are also hugely important um, for the future. They're, they've all got some similar problems. We've also got the problem of lots of our renewable energy, whether it's offshore or onshore, is in very nice bits of the United Kingdom, but not where everybody lives. And we've got to have ways of getting it there. So the um, interconnectors, there's the Bewley Denny interconnector um, that's um, going to be finished probably this year, but they're also talking about various subsea interconnectors. So the subsea interconnectors and the cables that bring power ashore from um, offshore generation, we've got lots of things that we need to do to support them. We've got to do initial seabed surveys so that we know that we can moor things that are going to be moored, put foundations in where they're going to be put in, or just lay um, cables. If we've got a high tidal environment, the cables will need to be buried. Is, what route can we take um, to get them to be buried? How do we know that the structure is still stable? Has anything gone wrong with it? Um, how do we know if the cables have moved? Why would we want to know if the cables have moved? Well, reasons we want to know is if they've moved, there's a much higher likelihood of failure. If you've got a two gigawatt wi um, wind turbine farm and you lose the cables, <coughs> you lose all the income. Okay? Uh, you've got to be able to be sure that all of these things are going to stay there and do what you want. So our wideband sonar allows us, without direct contact, to actually uniquely identify objects. That's good for when we're trying to do an initial survey, because we don't want to find unexploded ordnance where we're going to be doing sub subsea work. But also, when you're trying to track different cables, you want to be able to georeference them to see how much they've moved. So we can give diagnostic information at long range, and it can be run with autonomous vehicles. That earlier slide, which is hidden behind this bit just now, 
is an autonomous vehicle that can be programmed to go off and track these pipes and see how they've gone. We can go and look at other structures, see if they flooded and they shouldn't be flooded and how um, they're performing. That allows you to do prognostics, go in and do early maintenance, early diagnostics to help us um, make um, the renewable um, generation offshore feasible. It's hugely more challenging at sea, okay? You can't see things on the bottom. You can't go and fix things every day. It's very rare that if you've got a cable down on land, you can't send somebody out to fix it. It's very common if you've got something wrong with something out at sea that you can't go and fix it. If you've got a Force 6 going, you're not going to be wanting to be going to one of these offshore things. So preventative maintenance is one of the things that's going to be really important. We can do this slide, the sort of shades of blue shows an automatic classification of sediment types. So we can do this sort of clever thing. We can sense coatings, we can look at things that are buried. I'm going to have a go at moving this on, see how I get on. Oh, it's worked. Um, so there's, there's lots of potential market. I've mentioned offshore wind, offshore wave. Um, there's also tidal. All of these things are going to be happening. We've got um, probably, no, definitely more offshore wind commissioned. Um, up at the EMEX Centre in Orkney, they're doing various commissioning tests on wave power and tidal power devices. Um, we are able to offer something that does things that other competition doesn't. The multi-beam um, side scan sonar, which is what we're competing with, won't tell you what's inside something, and it's a much lower resolution. If you want to follow things with a magnetometer, you have to be within five metres of it. If you want to visually inspect, when the water's good, you have to be within five metres. When the water's turbid, you have to be within five centimetres. Um, so our system fills the gap for these. Um, who are we? Well, um, there's three founding directors. Um, Chris Capus, who's the CEO, um, Jan Pias, who's the Chief Technical Officer, and myself, um, Keith Brown. We also have some advisors to the board, um, Lawrence Omerod, who um, advises us on strategy and has significant commercial experience in offshore oil and gas, and Tom Sowerby um, in terms of sales and marketing. Um, we're... Um, where are we just now? Well, we're moving on. We've got, um, over the next one or two years, a 450k per annum um, turnover expected. Five to seven years, we're looking to be greater than five million in revenue. What we're looking for just now is we want to build our marketing and sales team. We've got something that works, that's in the water, and we're going out and doing things with it, it's, but we now need to be making sales. Um, the team that you saw is actually came out of a research lab. Our strengths aren't in marketing and sales, so we're looking to develop that, um, and that's why we're looking for some funding for doing that. And I think that's my last slide. I don't know. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.